Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, this next part of the build series will focus on assembling the replica Hengstler counter from, from Field Marshal. So uh, here's a rundown of all the various parts. Uh, we'll call this the coil adapter, and then you have the corresponding uh, Phillips screw there. This is the coil itself. This we'll call it the coil insert and then you have the two brass screws there that will uh, attach everything together. This is, let's call it the metal front cover. This will be the counter cage, if you will. This we'll call it uh, the rear plastic cover. <clears throat> this piece down here, we'll call that um, the button, let's say, the button spring, the button screw, uh, this will be the counter cylinder, um, the pins, and then finally you have the uh, little plexiglass uh, acrylic uh, cover for the rear cover. Um, the rear cover. So, anyways, let's get started here, and as we go along, I'll uh, talk about the different things um, I've made. So. Um, Generally speaking, uh, this is a pretty straightforward uh, assembly. Uh, there's not much uh, to it uh, from a complexity, uh, but out of the box, there is some work that needs to be done to make uh, everything fit together. So, first part here, we'll talk about the coil. Um, you can see the back part here. Um, I really needed to sand down uh, quite a bit to fit uh, inside the cage, uh, but basically used, I think it was uh, 250, 500, 1200 grit sandpaper. Um, I'll double check that and include that information, but basically sanded it down really well. Um, let's see here. Yeah, for this piece, it was really just this back part. The coil here um, had to sand around the perimeter here. This back piece here, this really took uh, quite a bit of trimming. So you can see here that it is really flush with the coil itself. Had to really take that down. So anyways, this just simply slides in just like that. Okay. And then this part slides into the cage. So where I ran into some of the initial challenges was this plastic piece fitting inside this cage. So I did uh, sand down, deburr all of the edges here, uh, make it as smooth as possible. Um, and then once I completed all of the sanding, this is really just a press fit in, just like that. And you'll see those two holes there. And my screwdriver, let's see here, the flathead. And the plastic piece here does not come tapped. It doesn't need to be just by Threading in screws uh, is enough. So. There we go. And that really does need to be a nice flush fit. Um, so make sure that you're able to screw everything down um, fully. And you'll see here in the next step why. It's a nice and flush. So then the way these guys go together is pretty straightforward. Just slide it over. And this is the reason why they need to be flush because it does, um, it's a pretty tight fit. Um, really, really good. 
um, tolerances from field marshals. So um, there we go. Okay, fully seated. And the next part here, let's see here, put the spring right in there. This part, <clears throat> we'll talk about this just a little bit. So this comes originally just plain white. Um, I did put some black primer paint and I put a coat of uh, Future Pledge for gloss floor wax on it just to give it some shine to replicate what the uh, vintage button might look like. But uh, what I had to do here was this part, when it came, it would maybe go in that much, okay? It would not continue to slide in. So what I ended up doing was sanded the bottom down, sanded both sides, tapered it just slightly, on this edge there, uh, and, and that was sufficient for this. On the cage here, and I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little hump right there, a little seam line between these two holes, or along, runs alongside those holes. Um, that was pretty prominent. You can see there, you can see a little remnant there. And what it did was it was higher on this left side than the right, so it would lift up. <clears throat> it would essentially be cockeyed like that. So it was really hitting a lot of resistance. Um, so I had to shave that down. And then I ran um, some really thin needle files into these channels on the left side and the right side just to open up everything. So just keep working at that and ultimately uh, everything fits. So not a big deal, but um, just be aware of that. So that fits in there. And then again, this screw goes into this 3D printed piece. Uh, it does not come tapped again. Uh, it doesn't need to be, you just have to line up the holes Let's see if I could do this on camera part and let's see we'll do the front part here first so as it comes you have these pins um, I've seen people just cut these pins off since you really don't need them um, but I just decided not to in this case the left side here fits um, without any issues they just slide in but the right side that was pretty tight it, the, the right side pin would not go in. So took a drill bit, um, probably was, I think my smallest one, um, I can't remember the size, but uh, just you had to open up that bit a little and then it would just slide on. So, and then if you see that hole right there, change bits. next part here we'll talk about the cylinder uh, basically the numbers are carved out um, it's not white it's just uh, a negative uh, piece that gets carved out so there is some plastic slag from the cutting process you need to clean that out um, and then afterwards 
I basically use the crayon method. So take a white crayon, rub it around, um, and then I would you know keep working at it to fill those holes. And then at the very last step, um, I did notice that there were um, some divots and some other. It, it just didn't look very smooth. So I ended up taking a, a hair dryer, ran over it. Um, it melted the crayon just enough to smooth out everything and uh, there you go you know and then cleaned it up with a very slightly damp paper towel um, and then you're able to kind of clean up everything so um, in this particular case uh, this will fit in here and we will be inserting and securing this using these pins in those holes so let's get to that <coughs> You have to slide that back. This cover should slide right over. Oh, line up those numbers a little bit more. There, we go. there you have it. And then this one I won't do right now because I don't have my uh, glue handy, but I'll probably use some E6000 on the edges and then just uh, rest it in there. But that essentially is how it will look. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to note, the holes that you see on the cover here uh, were not included as part of the kit. I added these holes. There's one on the top, one on the bottom. And what I ended up doing was on some vintage counters, there's a screw that sits on top and I'm assuming that that holds and secures the back cover on. Um, I wanted to replicate that so went to the hardware store got some brass uh, slotted screws. Um, I, I do have to caution or note that these screws are probably too large when you look at the reference photos but uh, they were the smallest screws that I was able to find at my local Ace 
Um, I know McMaster Car has all sorts of sizes of screws um, that are much smaller than this. Uh, if I had the time or the wherewithal, I probably would source something smaller. Um, but again, this is not a perfect replica. I just want to get something that looks, uh, resembles it. Uh, things are going to get painted anyway, so it won't be that visible, hopefully. But um, I just wanted to try my hand at it. So as this piece comes from Field Marshal, there's two holes. And I ended up drilling out the hole on the right. And I also tap that. So these screws, brass screws, are 440 thread. And so I drilled that out, um, tapped it, and you can see it is a very there we go. It is a very um, tight, close uh, fit there to that next hole, but. The wall between those holes stayed intact, um, so that's good. And then same thing on the bottom side, on the bottom. And so what this ends up doing is that will secure on. flush this side and what I'll do too is um, I think I've already linked my build log on the RPF but um, check that out because I do have more photos and um, background as to what I did measurements taken but anyway so that's what that particular mod looks like um, yeah, pretty happy with how that turned out. And then what I also wanted to show you is uh, the mounting point <clears throat> for uh, attaching this to the scope rail. Uh, this is the scope rail that uh, Field Marshal uh, includes in his kit. Uh, these two holes uh, were not uh, included uh, by Field Marshal as part of the kit. Um, I ended up drilling that, and so I have a whole bunch of more detail um, uh, on my build lock. But basically what I ended up doing was, I, when I was getting those screws, I ended up getting uh, a couple more things. These are 832nd block black oxide Phillips screws, and of course, 832nd square nuts and the idea here is that uh, and hopefully you guys can see this I'll try to get some light um, I, I needed a way to attach the counter to the rail and wanted to find something simple so I wanted to minimize the use of adhesives and just to make everything um, you know replaceable at the end of the day. Um, so decided that if I use if, if I use square nuts, they will um, self-lock itself. Uh, self-lock once it's in here. And I'll show you what this does. But basically if it's square, it sits square at the bottom here and against the other nut and by twisting or screwing down the actual screw, um, it basically holds itself in there. So you'll see what I mean here. And these guys are small enough that you can just slide it in. Uh, there you go. Might be able to see it sitting in there. And then what I end up doing, let me change my bit here again. So I drilled those two holes, took the measurements as to how 
uh, those nuts would sit and the distance between them I believe might be nine millimeters something like that I'll, I'll include those details as well you could also find that on my build log and then uh, we'll get to that the scope rail here uh, field marshal includes that single hole there uh, I added that and also elongated it a bit uh, just to give um, some adjustment possibilities once this is all attached. So, let's see if I could do this. Line up everything. So right there it is locked in. Add in the other screw. There you have it. The counter is mounted onto the scope rail. It looks relatively uh, level for the time being, but here, let me show you. If we wanted to adjust the angle, just loosen both of those screws, and then you can see there's a little bit of play that you can fine tune the adjustment, but once you're happy with it, Lock it all down, and there you go. And the nice thing is, when this is mounted, uh, those um, screw heads they do not touch the receiver tube. Uh, so you got plenty of clearance there, and uh, there you go. So thanks for uh, following along, and uh, again, hope this has been helpful. Take care.